Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. So today we'll be looking at the abdominal quadrants and region. We'll be introducing the abdomen and the abdominal quadrants and the region. So before we go into the abdominal quadrants and regions, let's first of all understand what the abdomen means. So the abdomen is defined as the region in the human body that is found between the thorax and the pelvis. So the abdomen is the region that is found between the thorax and the pelvis. So this is the thorax and this is the pelvis here. So the abdomen is this region here between the thorax and the pelvis. All this area is the abdomen. So going further, the abdomen is divided into the anterior abdom abdominal wall and the posterior abdominal wall. And this anterior and posterior abdominal wall bounds the abdominal cavity. This is the abdominal cavity, and the abdominal cavity contains the abdominal viscerals or the internal organs. So, this is to say that the abdominal cavity here contains internal organs or visceral organs, and they are bounded both anteriorly and posteriorly by the anterior and the posterior abdominal wall. And the abdominal walls contains the skin, the superficial fascia, and muscles, peritoneum, and the rest of them. So this is the content of the both the anterior and the posterior abdominal wall. Let's look at the quadrants of the abdomen. Initially, the abdomen was divided into four quadrants. So these divisions help the doctor or the health practitioner to be able to localize, identify, and then diagnose and underlying disease condition. So, in essence, each of the quadrants of the abdomen have an internal organ that lies there. And if any disease condition is affecting this internal organ, it tends to manifest uh, at the surface of the abdominal wall. So, being able to manifest at the surface of the abdominal wall, depending on the quadrants or the area or the region that this uh, uh, manifestation is, the doctor or the health practitioner can be able to tell, okay, since this organ is found here, these are the possible uh, problems that may be wrong. And it will help to intensify and uh, be specific in further tests. So, now, because of the fact that this quadrant helps in the localizing, identifying, and diagnosis of diseases in, that is found in the underlying structures or underlying organs. But then you can see that this division is not precise. It is broad. You get. So it is not specific. And a further division was made. And that is where we have the regions of the abdomen because the regions of the abdomen went more specifically and precise that any uh, manifestation of disease that is found in any region can be a doctor or a health practitioner or a nurse can be able to know the exact organs that lies there and be, can be able to diagnose that this is the problem so we have about nine regions in the abdomen so remember that further divisions we are made and this division that is into nine area or nine region is known as the regions of the abdominal wall so here we have the right hypochondrium you can see the right of hypochondrium and remember that each of these regions have underlying structures that uh, are found there or they have internal organs that underlies it. So the right hypochondrium, we have the epigastrium, we have the left hypochondrium, we have the right lumbar region, 
we have the umbilical region, we have the left lumbar region, we have the right inguinal region, we have the hypogastrium and the left inguinal region, making it into nine. So these nine regions are the nine regions of the abdomen. So we'll be practicalizing this so that we'll see these regions in practical terms. So looking at what we have here now, you can see the abdomen here. So here is the abdomen. And you can see I've been able to improvise by using this to illustrate or to show the nine regions of the abdomen. So you can see the first one. This is the right hypochondriac region or the right hypochondrium. You can see the epigastrium. You can see the left hypochondrium. This is the right lumbar region. This is the umbilical region. This is the left lumbar region. This is the right inguinal region. This is the hypogastrium. And this is the left inguinal region. So I will be telling us the underlying structures or the underlying organs that can be found in each of these regions. It will help us a long way to understand what we mean. So the right hypochondriac region, you can see right hypochondriac. If you check, you can see the liver lies here. The gallbladder lies here. Then you can see some part of the, some part, upper part of the right kidney lies here. You can see the ascending colon and some part of the transverse colon of the large intestine lies here. Also the hepatic pleasure or the right colic pleasure lies here. So you can see that any, um, manifestation of a disease condition in the surface here. You can see that the, the diagnosis will be narrowed down to these structures or these organs that I just mentioned now. So that is it. Then here now is the epigastric region. So here we have the transverse colon. We have the lower part of the esophagus. Then some part of the stomach also finds its way here. Also some part of the small intestine also finds its way here. Then we have the head region, which is the left hypochondrium. Here we have the stomach. The stomach majorly lies here. Then the spleen also lies here. Then the some part of the, the left kidney, the upper part of the left kidney lie here. Then the transverse colon, some part of the transverse colon and some part of the descending colon also lie here in the left hypochondriac region. Then the tail of the pancreas also lie here. So just imagine when so a, a, a patient comes to a doctor and they complain of having uh, a sharp pain in the left hypochondrium here. You can see that the, the, what the doctor will think, since the stomach lies here, the doctor will think about gastric ulcer. So that is the essence of these divisions. We are coming to further examples so that we we'll understand more. So coming to the right lumbar region, this is where the right kidney sits, majorly. So you can see the right kidney here, the ascending colon of the large intestine also lie here. Then some part of the small intestine also lie in the uh, right uh, lumbar region. Then coming to the umbilical region, here you see the small intestine lie here, the right and the left ureter, right and left ureter lie here mainly they lie here also the pancreas also lie here then coming to the um, left lumbar region in the left lumbar region this is where the kidney lie then you see the descending colon also lie here 
then some part of the small intestine also lie here. Then let's go over to the right inguinal region. This uh, inguinal region, the right inguinal region can also be called the right iliac region. So whichever one. So here you see the veniform appendix or the worm-like appendix. It lies here. The sacrum, that is the first part of the large intestine, lies here. The ascending colon, some part of the ascending colon, lies here. Then in the female, you see the right ovary. This is where the right ovary in the female is situated. And even the right uterine tube lies here. So coming to this light uh, inguinal region now, if a patient uh, comes to the hospital and they uh, complain of pains around this region or um, reddishness around this region, believe it that the doctor will suggest appendicitis because the appendix lie in this region. So that is it. Then coming to the hypogastric region or the hypogastrium. Coming over here, you see the urinary bladder. This is where the urinary bladder is situated. Here now, is where the urinary bladder is situated. You see the, the rectum. The rectum is situated here. Then you also see um, right and left ureters. Some part of right and left ureters are situated here. Then in the middle, you see the seminal vesicle, the doctor's deference and the prostate. Then in the female, the uterus also is situated in this region. Then coming to the left inguinal region here, you see the descending colon, some part of the descending colon lie here. Sigmoid colon of the large intestine lie here. Then in the female, you see the left uterine tube and the left ovary in the female. So this that I just showed us is the nine regions of the of the abdomen. So having understand what I mean, or having understand that these regions we are created for the sake of uh, localizing, identifying, and diagnosing. Uh, of diseases, it will help us, and that is the basis of surface anatomy. So, we've come to the end of this teaching. I would like us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisom Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends. Thank you very much.